David, in the workshop you were mentioning that in the 1960s when you started Ashtanga, it was just basically hippies doing yoga. Right. And nowadays we have everybody doing yoga yeah. all from all walks of life. Do you think this has a bearing on society? Do you think it changes society? I think that yoga changes people. Mm -hmm. So it was hippies interested in doing it. Some of those hippies actually like became business people and things, but they're still sort of hippies at heart. Mm -hmm. But it hasn't really changed the yoga, but yoga does change people's lives. But there's an interesting dynamic of this. If you look, sometimes we say, well, yoga will really change your life. But I, I back up one step before that and say, what was happening in your life that made you want to go to a yoga class? Something made you also interested in yoga. There was maybe already a change happening, mm -hmm. and then the yoga was a catalyst or, or a tool to help that. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, yoga is a tool. So the fascinating thing about it is business people find benefit from it. Athletes find benefit from it. Um, a doctor or, or students studying or people are finding all kind of applications for yoga. And then people have interest in a specific area. Maybe they're working with ADD or addiction issues and they find, wow, yoga is this universal tool. So it just happens that, yoga, that in the early days it was yogi, you know, the yoga people that were interested in it were hippies. Mm -hmm. But because of its universal application, the yoga is the same, but more people are finding interest in it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So you think the And does yoga it change society? I mean, I don't, I, I don't have some utopian idea that if everybody does yoga, it'll be a perfect paradise, because there's a lot of not nice people that do yoga. Mm -hmm. But maybe they'd be worse if they were not doing yoga. Mm -hmm. But yoga is just a tool. And how do we use the tool? And it takes time to apply the yoga beyond just what we're doing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah. But people can, if you think of, some people treat asanas like a currency, like they, they accumulate more and more of these asanas. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And just like money, money is not a bad thing or a good thing. It's mm -hmm. a neutral thing. What mm -hmm. someone does with it tells you a lot about that person. Mm -hmm. I had a friend once say, if you really want to learn about someone, Give them everything they think they want and see what they do. Oh, and so we, we want more asanas, you know, or we get, but what do some people do with it? It's just like somebody with a lot of money. Some people just do selfish things. Some people are very benevolent and help others. So it's a tool. Mm -hmm. The duty of the teacher is just to in, encourage, to facilitate and inspire practice. It's not actually to tell a student how to live their life. Mm -hmm. It's to present the tool and teach how to use it and give responsibility to the student to be aware of that. Um, nowadays there's a lot of us uh, achievers doing yoga mm -hmm. and we can get caught up in this feeling like if I don't do my practice then we feel guilty mm -hmm. about this. Um, do you have any suggestions in how to not make this like another thing to do in the day? Right. right? If we look at yoga as the thing that helps all the other things we do, the asanas aren't the goal. Mm -hmm. We don't do yoga to become an asana machine, like robo-yogi. You know, you put in a coin and we do the shapes. Mm -hmm. That time on the mat is like a laboratory for life. How do we deal with the asanas we don't like? How do we deal with the ones we love, etc.? Can we create an equal mind while we practice? It's just the learning center for the rest of our day. Mm -hmm. And as an, like an overachiever, oh, we want to get this, we want to get this. So you can't blame someone for bringing that to yoga because that's the tool that they have been successful with in life. Mm -hmm. So you have to understand, okay, I understand. But you may have to tell this person, look, I appreciate your enthusiasm. That's really good. That's a great quality. But if you try to hurry in yoga, this is going to beat you up. Don't make this another place of drudgery and duty and all this kind of stuff. Make the mat the loving place. My wife Shelley describes the mat like this. She said she would think of her mat like her mother. Now she said her mother because not everyone has good relationships with their mom, right? But she said because her mother was very loving. 
No matter what she did, her mother was always like this, welcome home, we love you. Mm -hmm. If the mat and the practice is that, so when you come to the mat, you missed a few days of practice. You will never find the practice waiting for you on the mat like this, huh? And just where have you been the last few days? You should feel bad about yourself. I bet you can't do what you were doing before. Uh huh. It looks like you gained some weight too. Blah blah blah. The mat will never do that. Mm -hmm. The practice is just like this. Oh, wow! So great to see you again. The mat is the place of freedom. This is where we go away from all of those other pressures. Now you can turn it into a pressure, but don't blame it on the yoga. Mm -hmm. Make the yoga the happy place. Patabi Joyce used to say, minimum daily practice, 3A, 3B, the final three postures of closing sequence. That's the time you've got. Do that. Mm -hmm. That's real. That's Patabi Joyce saying this to people. He understands not everybody can do the 90 minutes. If you can, great. But if you give the people the option, you have to do this six days a week, 90, day, 90 minutes a day, or don't do Ashtanga, people won't do it. Yeah. Better to make this as a positive thing. This is the place I go because when I do it, I feel good. I feel good after. There was a student once said, she had her formula for success in her practice. It was so brilliant. She kept her mat on a shelf rolled up. Mm -hmm. For her to feel successful, she took this mat from the shelf, rolled it out. She would step onto the mat and take one breath. Inhale, exhale. She could roll the mat and put it back to the shelf and say, that was a successful practice. Mm -hmm. What was brilliant about this? She said, never did I only take one breath. Mm -hmm. of course Sometimes the hardest thing is just to get the mat down. Mm -hmm. And she said, well, then as long as you're there, you go, well, maybe I can do a couple sun salutations. And once you start, oh, it feels good. Yeah. But you shouldn't do this because you have to. You shouldn't do this yoga because someone laid a guilt trip on you. You shouldn't do this yoga because someone told you you're bad if you don't. The only reason you should do this is if you do it, you feel better. Mm -hmm. So if you enjoyed your practice today, no one has to tell you to do it tomorrow. And set in your mind what is your minimum practice that you want to fit in and be realistic. Mm -hmm. It's very easy for overachievers to create some giant, yeah. inaccessible goal. Or I'm going to achieve or this, I'm achieve this, this, and, this and this and this yeah. and this. Mm -hmm. Rather, I'm going to practice. I'm going to step on my mat. I'm going to practice. Let's say someone can do this three days a week, 20 minutes each day. Mm -hmm. For three times, 20 minutes. If you do that the rest of your life, you're going to get a lot more benefit than if you do 30 days in a row and then I never want to do this again. Yeah. We humans will live in extremes. But if you create a minimum that's real, that you can really do it, then maybe you sometimes will do more, but you say, I'll never do less than this amount, but it's realistic. If you have children, mm -hmm. people are busy and it's not fair for a teacher to say, well, get up earlier. Some people are already working two jobs, they've got kids, they've got so many responsibilities. You can sit your family down and say, family, mommy or daddy, whatever the case is, mm -hmm. for 20 minutes, these three days, is going to be in that room, behind that door, doing yoga. If you give me this little time to myself, I will be a nicer person. <laughs> and your family will realize this is true. Because all of us, you get to a point where you're giving everything and you and you start to become short and you start snap arr, arr. your family will look at you and go whoa mom dad I, go do your go yoga do thing <laughs> go to your room do your yoga man chill out hey we'll give you an hour go in there peace <laughs> whatever home do that thing because it's true you feel better when you do yoga but make it realistic don't make it inaccessible don't make it some horrible thing do it because it felt good and you want to do it the next day. Mm -hmm. And what about for yoga teachers? Because in the yoga, I think even the average person, they have their profession outside. Yeah. But a yoga teacher, we feel the pressure then when we see David Swenson come and he does all these things and you have all your yoga students watching and you know that, you know, I've never been able to do this and I never will be able to do this. So then you can feel a little bit like, oh, I'm not so good at the yoga. I do my yoga. It's not anything special, you know. It's just I get on my mat. I I do what I can. Yeah. 
it's very easy to compare ourselves to other people. Mm -hmm. And we can find a massive list of reasons why we should feel bad about ourselves. Yeah? We can make a huge list. Mm -hmm. But why? You can also make a list of reasons to feel good about yourself. I said this jokingly in the class the other day. Do you want to feel good about yourself? Go to your high school class yeah. reunion and just look around the room and you'll be like, whoa. Exactly. And as a teacher, what is the greatest compliment a student can give to their teacher? What would it be? That I felt great after the practice, after the class. Yes, all of those things. But you know the greatest compliment is for the student to surpass the teacher. Mm -hmm. exactly. That's the greatest thing. But a teacher also feels like, oh, I have to be on front. I have to be on top. I have to be... The duty of the teacher is to encourage, inspire, and facilitate practice. Mm -hmm. And then you have your own practice as well. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So as a teacher, you, you need to keep practicing, but students are going to be able to do stuff you can't do. Mm -hmm. Other people can do stuff you can't do. In, in the old Western, they used to say, there will always be a faster gun. <laughs> there will always be someone much more flexible, someone stronger, someone better looking, whatever it is. There's always the other. Exactly. And so, if you, if you tie self-identity around these things, you're always going to be bummed out. Because there's a newer person, there's the younger person, there's the funnier person, there's the more flexy person, there's the stronger person, there's the blah, blah, blah. And we're, if you're competing on that, it's a, it's a dead end. Mm -hmm. When is it okay to feel good about your practice? Mm -hmm. And for all of us, or for many of us, let's say you have 50 people in a class, they love it, and one person comes up and says, I didn't like the class. All we remember is one person didn't like the class. Mm -hmm. Something wrong with me. One person didn't like it. <gasps> or, oh, I used to be able to do that, now I can't do that. But you forget all the things you still can do. Mm -hmm. Also, go and volunteer time in special needs places. Volunteer time for people that are really struggling. You'll start seeing, wow, yoga is is so much beyond all of this stuff. I've done these 100-hour trainings, and we, we spend a lot of time talking about the specific counts and adjustments and all of these details of the practice. At the end of the course, it was in Austin, Texas. Mm -hmm. It's one of the largest schools for the blind in America, it's in, in the same city. Mm -hmm. The last day, I took all the teachers to this school. These are children from the ages of maybe 10 to 18. They're not only blind, but many of them have severe physical disabilities. They're like this. Yeah. Some of them have been abused in a, all manner of ways. Some are in wheelchairs. And they, they have so many needs that each of these kids has an assistant with them. Mm -hmm. So I went in there, and let's say there's like 20 of us. Mm -hmm. The assistants moved away. The yoga teacher stood there next to the student. Mm -hmm. I did a yoga demonstration for these kids. How do you do that? Well, I described to them downward dog. I said, I'm going to describe a posture. I talked about hands on the floor, hips up, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. I described it in words. Then I said, there's a yoga teacher next to you. That teacher is now going into this posture. I want you to touch their body and feel them in space. Now, what you felt, you try to do that and your teacher will try to help you. There was one girl, she had a hard time even standing up or sitting down, so she would stand. And we had her put her hands above her head, and her vinyasa was this. And she went, wow, wow, this is so cool, wow, amazing. And I was like, okay. She's experiencing it. Yeah, yeah. How jaded are we? Oh, my practice wasn't so good. I couldn't get my legs behind my head. Mm -hmm. This yeah, yeah. woman felt it. Mm -hmm. I've done a lot of surfing. Mm -hmm. I grew up surfing in Texas in water that was brown and little funky, terrible waves, you know. But we loved it. Later, I surfed in Hawaii and California and beautiful places. You come back to Texas and you're like, uh, oh, it's not good enough. And I see this young guy run with his surfboard out into that dirty water and he's yeah and he rides in and, and he picks yeah and he runs and says okay 
he's still experiencing it. Mm -hmm. The lucky person is the one that truly enjoyed their practice. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And still joy into the practice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff we can't do. Then there's going to be more as we age. But if you didn't do the yoga, it would be worse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sure. So just look, I can still do this much. And when somebody else can do other stuff, I know it's hard, but just be happy for it. Go, wow, that's so great. Go for it. But the day that you realize what you can do is what you can do, part of the yoga is also accepting things you cannot. Mm -hmm. Just like the, the asana currency we put in our bank account, mm -hmm. we accumulate us. Oh, I have first series. Oh, I have second series. Oh, I think the third series neighborhood, those people are happier. I need third series. I'll get that. <gasps> If you do this long enough, I promise you, you will start donating asanas to charity. You'll be like, here, animal rights. You know, here, feed the hungry. You don't want to see those asanas anymore. It's been there, done that. You start realizing the advancement of yoga is not in the next asana. It's in the asana you're doing now. There's been some recent uh, studies about fascia and they say that repetitive movement can be not very great for the body, that we should do different movements constantly, different, you know, maybe one day you run, the next day you swim, the next day you ride a bike, next week day you do yoga. And in the Ashtanga practice, we're doing the same thing every day. What are your feelings about this after doing the same practice pretty much for so many years? There's a lot of things that are the same every day. How do you brush your teeth? Do you brush it with your feet sometimes? Do you brush it with your hands? Do you br How do you brush your teeth every day? How do you walk? Should you walk backwards someday? Some days when you walk around the city, should you walk shuffling sideways? And then the other, should you, should you walk just on your hands one day? Mm -hmm. I'm saying that it, we're overthinking this stuff. Mm -hmm. Tai Chi is a repetitive action. In Tai Chi, you get one sequence of movements and you do it the rest of your life. That's all, one sequence. And the concept of repetitive action is what the alchemist said. Through repetition, the magic is forced to arise. You do the same thing over and over and now you seek depth. There are musicians, some musicians will play one thing their whole life. Mm -hmm. Does it mean if you play guitar, you should also play the trumpet and, and the drums and... Mm -hmm. I'm just saying there's a lot of things that, that it doesn't have to be like that. You do the thing that makes you feel good. Okay, repetitive action in Ashtanga. How many directions do you move during your practice? Yeah. Every direction. Yeah. Yeah. It's not that you go and you just do one thing over and over. You don't just do this with your head a thousand times a day. Yeah. You go this way, this way, you twist this way, this way, you raise your arms. So exactly what you described is the practice. Mm -hmm. It's not that it's one thing. It's like 500 things that you repeat every day. You find mm -hmm. every direction of movement in Ashtanga, every part of your body is moved. Forward bend, backward bend, inversions, twisting right, twisting left. Legs spread wide, legs together. Bend forward, bend back. Raise your arms, lower your arms. Lift your head, lower your head. It's a total balance. Mm -hmm. It's not the same thing. Yeah, exactly. It's repetitive, but it's a repetitive whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, so it, I, I, I find it a moot point. It's different than if you do this. If you just type, you're doing one thing for nine hours. That's different than if, if you do this and this and this and this and that and that. Yeah. That's a bunch of different things. It's a whole string of different things. It's not one thing. Nice. There's no problem. It's good for your fascia and good for your mind. <laughs> well, I've been practicing for over 20 years and I see that the way I, my body is now is completely different than it was 20 years ago where everything kind of just flowed and came easily and now it feels a little like <laughs> like this. Um, mm. What kind of advice do you give for the aging yogi so that we don't just switch styles, we can stay on the Ashtanga path but yeah. how would we approach it? Well, I hear people say, oh, I do restorative yoga. Ashtanga Yoga First Series is called Yoga Chikitsa. It means yoga therapy. Mm -hmm. The way that we practice Ashtanga can be an infinite number of ways. You can bring this into it. You can be soft. 
You can leave vinyasas out when you need to. You can go deeper, you can back out. There are myriad ways to do this in a different fashion. And sometimes people complain about getting older. And I say, but come on, the alternative to getting older is dying. <laughs> of course we're getting older. Yes, things change. But if you weren't doing yoga, it would be worse. Remember the, the visit you had to your class reunion? Wow. Mm -hmm. There's a guy named Paul Bragg. You may have heard of him, maybe not. In health food stores in America, there's something called Bragg's Liquid Aminos. It's this uh, kind of a sauce, anyway. Mm -hmm. But he was famous. He lived to 100 years old. He was the guy who started the word health foods. Okay. He died when he was 100 in Hawaii after body surfing in the ocean one day in a wave. At 100? Yes. He used to say, I jog over the graves of people that laughed at me. And he said, to rest is to rust, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And what this means is, yes, we're getting older. Maybe you cannot do things you can do before. There are things I cannot do now that I could do before. Mm -hmm. However, there are things I can do now that I could not do before. Mm -hmm. Also, you look, sometimes maybe my back was more flexible, but now I have more control. That's true. Sometimes it's just that we were just flying into some flexible thing, but now you have more of a balance. The balance is maybe you're less flexible, but stronger. And you're okay to skip vinyasas? The, I am, yeah. because you need to keep practicing the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. Again, what is a vinyasa? Those are vinyasas. I watched Patabi Joyce work with the quadriplegic boy, paralyzed from his neck down. And people say, oh, but David, if I leave some vinyasas out, doesn't it mean I'm being lazy? Maybe it just means you're being intelligent. Mm -hmm. You've got the rest of your life to do this. Be realistic. And modifying or using props? Or... Now, props, I say, I don't say don't use them, but I say only for emergencies. Mm -hmm. Personally, I would exhaust every other possibility of modifying an asana before bringing in a prop. Why? Props are addicting. I know people in Props Anonymous trying to give up their props. <laughs> if you can't get your hand to the floor, don't put your hand on a block, put your hand on your leg. Mm -hmm. Use your own body to prop your body up. Mm -hmm. Don't just go to a prop, there's so many things you can do. If shoulder stand, instead of using blankets, shift your hips away from your face and put them in your hands, now there's no pressure on your neck. Mm -hmm. There's ways to modify. But let me ask you this, people talk about aging, but they tend to talk about it in decades. Mm -hmm. But we're older today than we were yesterday. Yeah. So what do you do different? Because today is different than yesterday. This is yoga. You step on your mat, it's always called a practice. It's never called the performance. We stand on the mat and we just start to go. Maybe you're just walking through the first sun salutations, feeling your body. As a teacher, you have a lot of students you've been teaching here a long time. That student that was in your class yesterday, when they come in today, it's a different body. You know that as a teacher. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just because they easily did something yesterday doesn't mean they will today. Mm -hmm. So when you're approaching them and you're adjusting it, you're aware that, well, this is a new day. Maybe their child kept them awake all night. Maybe they had a very stressful situation or some bad news or something happened in their life. You come in as a, as a teacher that's aware and you're listening and you're observing and with your hands you're understanding this person's body. We have to do that to ourselves as a practitioner. This is a new day. Older means from yesterday to today. It's not just from when I was 30 to when I'm 40 or when I'm 50. Mm -hmm. It's one day to the next. We have to be aware and deal with this is reality. This is what's happening in my body today. And we want to accept it or not, but it's, it's real. Yeah? Mm -hmm. so, how we approach that. Yes, modify things, but we all modify things. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we have to be careful we don't, that we're not turning Ashtanga Yoga into some sort of an elite fitness program. Is this truly just for people with two arms, two legs, and a strong, healthy body? Mm -hmm. That's not yoga anymore. This is just fitness for healthy people. Again, Patabi Joyce worked with the quadriplegic boy. I've taught people in wheelchairs. I've worked with people that are blind, deaf, I've had people missing limbs, they don't have a leg, they don't have an arm. Mm -hmm. Racked with arthritis. 
I've worked with all of these people. I have never met anyone that cannot do Ashtanga. I've met people that don't want to, that's different. Mm -hmm. But anyone that is interested, if they can move some part of their body, they can. And even Patabi Joyce, he manipulated the boy's body for him because he couldn't move his body. And did you do the same like primary series poses, you more have to, or less? But yeah. then you have to look at what is the yoga. Mm -hmm. Every one of us works within our capacity. So as a teacher, you look, what is their capacity? Ashtanga is a system, but it has a million different ways it can be presented. Mm -hmm. Now, there are teachers that just present it like this, and there's some rules, and you find... There's a difference between teaching yoga or just being an enforcer of rules. Mm -hmm. Teaching yoga means you understand how to present this to anyone interested. It is your duty as a teacher. It's very easy for someone to, to teach someone something that they already know how to do. Because what do you have to do? You just say, do it. Jump, they do it. Mm -hmm. But what do you do when someone can't? Now what? You have to be creative. Like I said, there's a woman showed up in a class, the whole class is sat on the floor as I'm talking. It's, it's the beginning, it's gonna be a lead first series class. They're all sat on the floor. I say, okay, samasti tihi. One woman just kept sitting there. I'm like, huh, okay. Well, my host failed to tell me she's paralyzed. She had a wheelchair in the, but she pulled herself to her mat and she sat there. In the moment, I had to figure out how to teach her first series. Wow. Now she could roll forward, so she would go up dog, down dog, Paschimottanasana, she could pull her legs in front of her and she would do the Parangustasana, Parasa, Uttitrikonasana. In the moment, okay, that was her yoga. That's what she did. Every one of us has limitations and every one of us has abilities. As a teacher, that's what you deal with. Every one of us is modifying something. Your body is different than my body. My body is different than someone else's body. My body is different than my body yesterday. So how do you teach each unique student? That's how you practice. You figure out, what can I do today? What, right? Mm -hmm. It's infinite. But Ashtanga gets this reputation, it's just like this. It's not the Marine Corps. It's not just for the few and the strong and the proud and the brave, even though some people present it that way. Anyone can do it. It's gonna require some endeavor. Mm -hmm. But we all have capacity. We have ability and inability. Regardless, everyone. And so it's okay, yes, of course you're gonna modify things. Mm -hmm. If someone can't, if they can't hear, what do they do? If they have one leg, what do you do? Oh, you can never do Ashtanga because the best you'll ever get is half of a lotus, <laughs> right? I had a guy show up in class, one leg. He actually came and he took his leg off. Oh, wow. Did full standing sequence with one leg, what do you do? Parangustasana, parahastasana, triangle, he would lie down and go to the one side and his other side, just there was not even a prosthetic. He would just lie down to the other side. I did drop backs with this man. Oh my goodness. Everything. He had one leg. Mm -hmm. I had a guy, I've got a friend, who his, at his accident in the child, he cut off all of these three toes, so he only has the two. So when you say, Utita hasta parangustasana, grab your big toe, he says, I don't know where it is. <laughs> So he holds his foot. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, yeah. you gotta be creative. You gotta mm -hmm. see the big picture. It's not just what is primary series. Mm -hmm. It is what it is. It you gotta it figure more it out. Inspiring. It makes it real. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yes, if you have the capacity to do, okay, that's what first series is to you. Person that doesn't have legs, it's gonna look different for them. Yeah, figure it out. This is yoga. It's not just some little, you know, private club of fitness. <laughs> so what is yoga? <laughs> yoga is a tool for life. All right? Mm -hmm. Yoga is not a religion. It's a philosophy. It's a way of life. If you look at the old, like, 
Star Wars movies or Star Trek mm -hmm. when they're in their spaceship and the enemy ship comes and they're shooting all these like missile things at them and in the ship they push a button and they there's a force field goes around the ship now all of those things they're shooting are bouncing off because there's a force field mm -hmm. but what happens they're in the battle long enough and the force field starts to weaken and they're freaking out we've got to get out of here the shields coming down we got to get out of here what is yoga you do yoga the only reason to do this stuff increase prana in your body that prana becomes like a bubble, like a filtration system around us. Mm -hmm. How many things do we not have control over in our life? Everything. Most things. <laughs> Pretty much. Weather, mm -hmm. the economy, violence, mm -hmm. right? We don't know when these things can happen. At any moment, stuff can happen. Mm -hmm. The only thing we have true control over in life is how do we respond to the challenges that come up to us in a day. Mm -hmm. If we do yoga, we have a filtration system. It doesn't change the world out there, but this stuff that's coming at me, it slows it down a little. Mm. It gives me a different reaction or a response. The force field weakens, I gotta get back down there, put some more prana in my body because I, I can't control that world out there, but I'm gonna control how we respond to it. When I do my yoga, I respond with greater sanity and less pain. Mm -hmm. When that force field moves away, pow, now those things are real harsh. They're hitting me. It's harder to deal. Mm -hmm. I do my yoga again. That's the yoga. It's this tool. We do it to enhance all of the other areas of life. You can be a Hindu. You can be a Muslim. You can do anything you want and do yoga. It's a practice for life. It's a tool for living. The asanas is just the laboratory. But if the goal really is to put prana in our body, what is one of the greatest drainers of prana in life? Stress. Stress and pain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what if we practice yoga and imagine that practicing yoga is like pouring prana into a bucket, into our body bucket. Mm -hmm. Great. We're putting this prana in, energy in there. But we practice in such a way that we cause pain. You pour prana into the bucket and simultaneously you punch holes in the bottom of it. Mm -hmm. You put prana in and it drains right out. Mm -hmm. So yoga is this practice to increase prana. You should feel good at the end. If you're feeling tired, beat up, exhausted after practice, it's too much. Yeah. You can get too much of a good thing. Mm -hmm. It means you're practicing too hard. Put the prana in your body. Leave that mat feeling good. Leave your yoga practice like eating a meal. Just a little bit hungry for the next one. Mm -hmm. Don't OD on the yoga. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It's been so great. Thank you so much, Linda.